Welcome back to my channel. My name's Mel and it's been a minute since I've made a video because I've been very sick. I thought at first maybe I might just have a sinus infection from the weather changing in my area, but now everybody's making me think I might have had COVID because I've been feeling sick over a week and like things just don't taste right that I'm eating. I do have my COVID vaccines, so I'm just riding it out, but I'm feeling better today. So I wanted to make a video. I'm still going through Aliana's course as it's released. So I want to talk about that today. I was pretty much caught up with the releases until I got sick and now that I'm feeling better I checked my portal and there's some new videos to go through. But that's good. That means there's continued education coming in and I'm really excited about that. I'm really liking that some of the videos seem to pair together and like one's an intro to a topic and then one expands on that topic. So I'm going to talk about the wireframing videos which are the videos that released after the two intro videos that I already discussed. Like I said these two videos pair. They're pretty much the same project broken up with two videos. In the first one you're introduced to the project you're doing and she goes over Figma controls that you're going to need to know to accomplish this project. And then in the second video, you finish out the project that you started. The project is provided to you through a Figma community file. And in it, you're doing wireframes for Instagram, like the view when you first go in where you see like a couple posts and you see stories for an Amazon shopping page with some books and then for Google ads. Since these videos are on the topic of wireframing, the overall project that you're doing is you're doing wireframes of these screens and it goes through theory and there's a cool exercise built into this that you do. The project itself is that through the two videos you're creating wireframes of these screens. So what I saw that you got out of these videos is one, you're going over the controls of Figma so that way you know various controls such as making a square, a circle, the pen tool, the pencil tool, writing text, changing colors, you know, basic intro stuff. That's in like every like design program, how-to videos or courses. Like you always have an intro point to the controls of the program because if you don't know how to use the program, you can't do anything in it. She calls out industry standard font sizes in these videos, which if you had a job doing this stuff, you would be expected to follow. And then she does this fun sketch demo giving you a situation of where doing wireframes instead of jumping to a high fidelity design would be good for the design process and like showing like how easy it is to make changes when you're just in the wireframe stage versus if you were in the high fidelity stage. So definitely the first thing I got out of this video is learning how to use the pencil tool in Figma. That kind of sounds silly but like the Google course didn't really go over how to do the pencil tool and I just didn't jump to doing the pencil tool. I totally did the thing of like just putting little little squares or like little words or just grabbing like the icons I wanted out of the material design library. I also never thought to just doodle with the pencil tool the icons that I mean to be there. Like that's something that like you would think you would think of but like I just didn't think of it so that was very valuable. There is a memory exercise she does where it's like look at the screen and then try to draw what you remember and I've done that exercise a couple times in different design courses that I took in college and it's very very valuable. It teaches you on the hierarchy structure of composition because like there are things placed in specific spots for the point of those are the most important things people are going to remember. So that's always a fun little exercise to do. All three parts of this wireframe exercise were good and they forced you to think about like the placement of things and the sizes of things and like why they're there. So it's overall like composition thinking, especially like on a mobile phone or a website. It's different than in a newspaper or something. The industry font sizes that she called out, I think that was very useful to me and I'm gonna remember that later. So there wasn't really anything about these videos that I didn't like. There were like pause points in the video so that like you can pause and then do the exercise and like the first one bothered me but then I got used to it and I didn't even see it anymore so there isn't really a problem with the video that's more like a problem with me <laughs> but I figured it out like the pause points like definitely are helpful and needed especially if it's like go along as you can exercises and it kind of gives you like timestamps to remember. When we got to the Google ads exercise at first that overwhelmed me just because it's a chart and there's a lot of numbers and a lot of words and I just didn't know where to start but going through it step by step 
with her in the video then alleviated that anxiety and made it made sense and now it doesn't bother me but again like that's more of a problem with me <laughs> and not really a problem with the exercise because like realistically something like google ads is a possibility of something i could work on potentially and you can't just not make it what it is you know it's google ads it's really important for people who want to use it so to kind of close out the wireframing videos uh, when I first went into them, I thought I wouldn't really get any info out of it that I didn't already know. Because, I mean, it's wireframing, and wireframing is basically thumbnailing, and thumbnailing is basically brainstorming. And I've already learned that in, like, every design class that I've taken. Literally every class that you are introduced to in, at least, like, where I went to college, like, every art class, the first class is, like, this is what typography is this is what a thumbnail is, you need to brainstorm your work before jumping into like a high fidelity version of your work. So like I'm already pretty much trained in that, like it makes sense to me, I know why it's important. So I kind of thought like these would be nothing videos to me and it would just be like reinforcement of stuff I already knew and then I wouldn't really get anything until I got past these videos and started like going into like things that are more exercise based of like building something with Figma. But I'm really happy that I got stuff out of this that I didn't know, even if it was like simple stuff. Like I haven't really tried the pen tool and I haven't really tried the pencil tool. So it was nice to get to play with those tools in some capacity that I was forced to, to see that like, yes, they're very useful. I don't have to ignore them and there are uses for them. And the drawing, the icons that you mean to be there later on, like, I think, like, that's very valuable just, like, for me to put myself in a place to be like, oh, yes, I can do that. Like, I could just doodle those things. And now any, like, wireframing I do going forward, I'm going to think to do that. And probably the biggest thing I got out of this was the industry standard font sizes. Like, I'm always going to remember those. Because of my day job, I understand why industry size fonts are so important in things. I'm not working in the digital capacity of, like, making apps and websites, but I work on making products that are physical products that people use. There are standards to those that you have to follow, including font. Like, it's not so much of, like, making it readable just to read it, but there's an aspect legally that specific phrases and functions of words need to be certain point sizes, otherwise you're not compliant to sell in the US market. So that's something I've had to learn and I've had to remember. And because I'm a manager, I have to work it into our templates so that my team understands it. And I have to be very compliant to that stuff. Otherwise our products, like we fail testing for some of our customers that initiates that we need to retest, which is a fee. We could delay an order that could be like sour in our relationship with our customer. So that's like really important stuff. It's just good when you're able to remember those numbers for yourself as you're working, because like, since I've learned that info, now if I'm gonna do a template for a product, I just know what phrases need to be certain point sizes and I don't need little guides to tell me and I don't fail testing, you know? <laughs> So it is very important, that stuff. And I agree with her and pretty much every designer that I see says that wireframing is an important aspect to design. I do recognize that some people feel like you can skip it and just jump to like a high fidelity, which in part, like I'm kind of like, yeah, maybe like in some instances, but brainstorming is very very valuable because like your first iteration of something isn't what is going to be the thing it depends on like who you're working with if you're working with someone who's a more visual client having something that's like maybe a low fidelity mock-up where like you're not adding colors but like shapes make sense to what they are and like there's more pictures can help them because when i did the google course and we did the wireframes, nobody knew what they were. And people were like more critiquing that like things were gray boxes and didn't have pictures. 
where when I got to high fidelity and things had like pictures and colors, they started to focus more on like the functions of things and not so much on the visuals. It was very weird, but all in all, wireframing, very valuable skill. Everyone who is creative needs to learn it. It literally exists in every creative medium. It's in video, it's in print design, it's in regular like drawing, it's in graphic design, and it's in product design for apps and webs. So good videos, very valuable. I'm purposely not giving away information too much from these courses because if you want to know it, I think you should sign up and take the course and support the artist who's making the course. Thank you for watching. I hope that this video is valuable if you're thinking of signing up for this course. I'm gonna do videos on the next couple videos that seem to pair together. I just, I've been sick, so I'm a little bit behind. I'm kind of keeping up. I There's a couple new videos, like I said, that I need to do, but before I got really sick and I just slept on my couch for like a week and a half, like I was, I was in good shape. If this helped you, please give it a thumbs up. That really helps me. If there's anything you wanna say in the comments, please leave it below. I love interacting with people. And I hope you have a good day and keep designing and stuff and have fun and a good life.